Hello everyone, uh, in this uh, video I'm going to show you how to do the waffle charts with customized uh, markers, so like the ones that I'm showing here. So um, to start with, let me actually uh, create a new spreadsheet uh, so that I can show you how to create everything from scratch. So uh, first let me just uh, copy this part uh, because it's actually um, just something, so basically you just have a you just have a cell um, that's showing you um, the target percent that you want to uh, change that you can change in the future um, and then the next step you do is to set up the data for uh, your waffle chart so um, data x uh, so you need to set up the act uh, because we are actually you, you look like a it's a waffle chart, but it's actually um, a scatter point chart. Like if you look at the uh, chart type, uh, it's actually a scatter chart. So let me, uh, so which means that you would need the X axis and the Y axis. So the way you set it up is basically you have one um, and then you add it to 10. Um, so let's go to, no, actually we want it to be, yeah, this one, and then we want to copy it down to 10. Um, sorry, like I think it looks so small, so let me enlarge it. And then for the Y axis, you, uh, you structure it so that it's all once. And then you, um, and then for the next, um, one you actually make it like one plus this so that it's two uh, and then for every one here you copy it, copy it down to uh, from one to ten again and then this one you just copy it down and then it's all gonna be two so now you have this part and then you just copy it down so this one will automatically change to all threes and then you, you just copy it down until you have 10. So you have basically a um, hundred rows of data to create. Yeah, so that's how it looks. And then you basically have this to create uh, your waffle chart. Uh, the next step you need to do is actually define your um, X axis and the Y axis. And then uh, this is actually where you need uh, uh, the dynamic selection of the range. And then this is a formula that we are uh, setting up. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the f um, so the way you do it is actually to set it up in uh, data. Well, actually, I think it's better that I explain to you what the offset function means. So the offset function basically uh, gives you um, a designated or desired range based on your selection and the formula you, that you put in. So for example, let me show you. So for example, now you are at the cell of E8 um, and then you want to uh, and then you want to move to the right and then to uh, and then down to the cell. And then let's say you just want to select the cell. So uh, to do that, you would select E8 and then move to um, actually you want to move down, right? So you go one row and then you want to move to the right. So you go one column uh, and then because you want to just want to select this cell. So you go height as one and then your width as one and then it should give you uh, the value in F nine, which is one. Okay. So now let's change this to A, B, C, D and here we go. So that is ABCD. So offset function gives you uh, the position, like the value in a position that's desired based on the formula. So the formula that we want to set up here uh, then is actually the offset function. Um, and then you want to start with this cell, the beginning of the data set, the header. Um, you can make an absolute reference. And then the row you want to select is actually uh, just this row. Uh, uh, no, like actually just um, like one down. This is, uh, yeah, I think it's one down. Yeah, one down. And then you go, uh, you still want to stay in this column. So it's zero. Uh, 
uh, and then for the height, um, it will be a range. We are actually selecting a range here, so it's going to be a range that's depending on what uh, number we put in here. And then this is cell, uh, I think this is cell H4. So let's say cell H4, and then we can make it absolute reference as well. And then it's a percent, so we need to time 100. And then for the width, we just want one because we just want this uh, one column here. And then we close bracket. So that is, um, so this would give us a range. Uh, it's not showing here because it's a range, it's not a value. But then um, I'll just put the data, um, put the formula here so it's easier for us to copy. So, and then for this, uh, it's similar for your y-axis. Um, so the way I do it is that um, I just copy it. And then for our cell value, um, we need to still go down one column and then you select the range, but then you also, so, sorry, go down one row and then select the range that you desire, but also move one column to the right, which is the F, uh, the column F. Uh, and then you still wanna select the same, um, data range uh, and uh, you just want to select this one column. So that is a formula that you use for the y-axis, which is consistent here. So now you have the formula set. What you do is to copy the formula and then go to formula define name. So this gives you the opportunity to define the dynamic range that you select. For my purpose, actually, I just name it x. Um, um, just to be easy. And then this is my formula. And then I do the same for my Y, um, which is I define my name as Y, and then I give the reference for it. Okay, so now we have defined the name, um, the range, uh, nothing's happening. So now let's insert a scatter chart, with a, a blank one. And then, so this is a blank one that you have, um, and then just select data. We want to add a data. So let's say I just wanted to add a data. And then for the X axis, you select, uh, well, you basically need to put in whatever shit name you have. So in my case, it's shit one, um, exclamation mark, and then my range is X. So after you input that, you can see that Excel automatically calculates the range for you. And then you do the same thing for your Y, uh, exclamation mark, Y. And then, yeah, you can see Excel is automatically selecting the range for you as well. And then you can basically see that from the chart and then go OK, go OK. And then here we go. So that is the uh, basic for the chart that you want to uh, use to mon uh, manipulate. So now let's basically format it properly. So get rid of the chart title. Um, and now one thing, um, one thing I would uh, do is actually um, get rid of the, well, actually I don't like the grid line. So maybe just let me get rid of the grid line, make it look neater. I don't like the border for the chart. Um, so I'm getting rid of the border. Um, and then it's not looking like a square now, and that's because of the uh, axis that we have. So let me select my axis and then uh, change it. So actually here you need to change the minimum to 0 0.5 and then the max to 10.5. Um, and um, this way, the reason I want to do it is, as you can see, that way it puts the market in the middle of um, in the middle of the box that we want to have. And then you do the same for your y axis. It starts with 0 0.5, ends with 10.5, and then you want to have your units as one. Yeah. So this way, you basically have the gist of the structure here. So now uh, you can get rid of your axis, like you don't have to show them, uh, so that you have a square one. You have a square for your uh, chart. Uh, it's not exactly a square. So, but then you can select uh, to make sure it's uh, 
like an exact square, you select your chart, go format, and then you can adjust the height and width to make sure it's exactly identical. So let's say you can you can change it to whatever that's proper for you. But then for my case, yeah, it's uh, it's a 10 by 10 one. So now you can see my grid line is kind of wonky here. So let me make change to that as well. So for my vertical grid line, um, I want to uh, uh, axis um, and uh, I want to make sure the units is one so that all the grid lines here are showing. And, uh, and then after I have done that, after I confirm that I have a square, I can get rid of uh, the access labels. So now I have something that I work with. So let's say we want to replicate exactly this chart. What you need to do first um, is to fill the background. Let's say it's gray. And then for the grid line, we want to have it as white for both the vertical and horizontal one. Yeah, so now we have uh, the background. And then now let's test if it works. So for the target achievement, let's say we want to have 46. Yeah, it's giving us what uh, we need. Um, and then now the question is that how do we change the marker, right? So this is actually the easy uh, thing to do. So uh, the first thing you do is to basically insert whatever picture um, that you want for your marker. So for example, for my case, I, I go to insert and I insert a circle. So let's say this is a circle that I want to insert and I want to insert to be orange and I don't want the outline. Um, and then you copy it. You go control C and then select the marker. Make sure you're selecting everyone instead of just one and then just control value and then here we go so that is actually how it looks um, alternatively so this is one way you can do it um, alternatively because um, this is a circle already what you can also do is to select your marker and then go to format format selection um, go to your marker build in because you see we already have the um, the option, the circle option here. So you just increase the size here to whatever is perfect for your chart. Um, yeah, which is something looking like this. And then you can, and then you can change the color to anything that you like. Yeah, so that's one way to do it as well, right? Um, so yeah, but the thing about this part is that if you change the the uh, the size of the chart you have to resize your mark as well but still like it's not too bad so so we have done the first one so let's do the second one so it's really essentially the same in in a sense that basically you just need to insert whatever picture you have and then uh, size it to approximately the same size um, copy it and then go to your marker, select a marker and save it, uh, paste it. That's how it looks. Uh, and then let's do this. This one is also similar. Um, you basically just change the format to whatever format that you desire. And then for the marker, um, I was using a small square here. So you go to your marker option. Uh, you can go build in. I want a, I want a square. Let me see my square. That's not my square. That is not my square. Uh, and then let me change the color to white. Yep. And then here we go. So that is how you can realize a white square. And of course, you can change the for uh, the size. Uh, no, actually, I think this. No, that's not the one. That's not the one. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So that's the square. And then you can change the size to whatever that you see as appropriate. So that's that. And then the last one we are creating here is um, this one is this one. So this one is slightly tricky, but 
uh, but still not too bad. So let's say if we want the, uh, the background to be white in this case, and then what you do is that you insert a start, um, which comes in here. So let's say this is the start that we want to insert. And then basically you do the same thing. You select your marker, um, go select your data in here. You can see it's selected and then go paste. And then here you go, you have all the field stars, right? So it's there. Uh, and then the question is now, how do we realize the empty stars? So again, like the first thing you do is to make sure you have the shape. Um, this one we don't want any fill so it's just um, uh, an empty star and then what you need to do is actually to uh, basically do a reversed uh, scatter point chart that fills this area so you are still going to leverage those two formulas uh, which let me copy it here um, but then you have to come up come up with a different name for it. So for example, uh, the name I come up here is like X reverse, uh, because it is like a reverse set of data that we're putting here. And then the formula that you have here is basically that you uh, need to go, uh, it's still the offset function, but you need to go down to the very end of your data, which in our case here is E108. So let's go up select my formula. So the cell reference will be 108. So now, uh, it, because it goes reversely, right? Like uh, instead of going down, it's going up now. So for your row uh, selection, you actually need to go up one, which is minus one. Uh, for your column, still stay the same. Um, but for your um, range, like height, you should have also have the reverse. So for example, if uh, this one is 45, then we are hoping for 55 here, right? So the way that I do it um, is actually, I have a cell uh, in my, I have a cell in anywhere in my spreadsheet. And then I just um, define it as the rest of rest of that data. So in my case, it's H5. So then I say for H5, it's 100. And that note again, like the height now is not going down, it's going up, which means that this should have a minus sign before it. And then I do the same thing for my Y axis. Um, it's the same idea. So yeah, like as I go through the formula with you, it, it is very important to know what reference changes and what doesn't. For example, in my case here, you can tell that uh, this changes, the height changes, and then this one is minus. Um, but what doesn't change is um, the column reference. The column reference does not change uh, in those two cases because the column, the column position stays the same. So this one, because we're also going up, it's going to be minus one here as well. So, okay. So now we have the formula here. Again, you do the same thing of, uh, naming the range, which in which case you go to formula and then let's name it X reverse. Uh, you have the formula and then do the same thing for Y. Uh, define your range and then it's named as Y reverse and then refers to this formula. Okay, so now uh, what you do is select your the chart that you want to uh, add the data to, select data and then add another data. So I'm going to name it like data reverse as well, just for simplicity. Um, and then you do the same thing, one exclamation mark, X reverse. Um, yeah, and then for Y, you do the same thing. Okay. Okay, so now go OK, let's go up. Okay, perfect. So we are seeing all the dots here. That means that the data is already filled and then let's change it to like something 35 and then you can see it's filled. So now the only last step we need to do is to copy your star, select the data range and then copy it and then voila, you get exactly the kind of waffle chart that you want.
Okay, so that is everything I want to share with you today. I hope that you find it helpful. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. If you have any question, please leave me a comment and I will talk to you very soon.